I just was interested in doing that the way that a character's behavior affects other people. Like, it, it's one thing to do the movie about a character's behavior, to do a, a real character study. And to me, the sort of other approach to that is about what happens when that guy was just an idea that I'm really interested in. And I found it to be kind of an easy entry point to looking at the effects that a sort of, I won't say unlikable, but you know, like a challenging, complex, very conflicted uh, young man has on two different people, a young woman and an older man. Um, kind of like the other movie that blew my mind, or I won't say other because that's my own movie blew my mind, but you know, um, you know, like a movie that approaches that same question to me of do people's lives continue to exist when you walk away from them with holy motors, which like repeatedly asks the question of like when you walk into a room, something starts happening. Is the Phillips a guy who when he leaves the room, he doesn't think that like Ashley's life continues. So I wanted the movie to sort of combat what he thinks and be like. Simply put, Philip and Ike don't change, all three women do, and that the movie's not at all about men beating down women, but in fact it's about three smart, capable, emotionally in control women who are not permanently damaged by Philip or Ike, and the only moments that are like sort of, to me, a little bit hopeful are the ways that all the women at some point take a stand. And that was just an important thing to keep in mind, you know, when crafting the movie's endorsement of the character's behavior, because they all put up with it for a time, which I think is sort of what I wanted the movie to have to say about what people can get away with. It's like anyone can get away with anything for a period of time. And it seems like, you know, Melanie's put up with her father's antics for a very long time. Ashley's put up with Philip for a little, for a few years, and Yvette puts up with him for like a couple of months. And then that's it. And at some point, these men uh, push the women away, and then the women realize, like, what am I doing? Why am I wasting my time with a guy like this? The sort of filmmaking family that has grown, this is my third movie, has grown, you know, over the years is really something that I take very seriously. And it's a certain level of like personal and creative loyalty that I find very fruitful. Um, I can't see Sean behind Josephine, but I imagine he's rolling his eyes. <laughs> but, you know, like, Sean and I worked together at Kim's video, and Robert worked there before I did. Um, and, you know, like, I posted, I mean, for 10 years almost now, Sean, I just go to the movies, and we've probably seen 150 movies in this room together. So having this sort of relationship where on our third movie, and now a fourth one that we just wrapped, the shorthand is so concise and so complete to getting images. And, you know, never, on the first two, we couldn't afford a monitor. On this one, we had a monitor that I never looked at. I was right next to him because I wanted to watch the actors. And I don't need to look at the monitor to trust that we're getting what we want. And now editing a second movie with Robert, like, we're editing faster than we were last year because, like, again, you just sort of pick up your little ticks. And I've known Robert. No, I actually met Robert in this theater when we saw Wiseman's Boxing Gym at the festival, like, however many years ago. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's just easier to have the shorthand, and it's really fun to sort of, like, just make movies with your friends, and then on this one, open it up to, you know, professional actors, but still basically make the same movie with the same people. Husbands and Wives was a major, major influence on this film. Sean and I looked, not at the whole movie, because that would, you know, be, that would just be ripping it off, but, like, the camera work in that film is from another universe, and the one thing you directly stole from it is there's a shot, it's, I think, like, the first one in the first scene of that film, where like the camera lands behind a lamp and it kind of adjusts and whatever was going on at the time that movie was being conceived, like it's just unbelievable the way that that energy was translated into the cinematography and the style of that. And then that was something that Ryder, which Robert mostly makes and edits. So that style is pretty organic to both sides of that process. And uh, Jason and I watched Colonel Knowledge, which I'd never seen, which he said we should look at. We, we borrowed one shot from it. Um, and I, don't know, I think, I mean, that's basically it. You know, like, those other New York movies, like, I watched uh, this movie called Heart with uh, Brad Davis, which is, like, a New York movie that just, like, looks like nothing. It's just so brown and anonymous and timeless. It's from, you know, right before he died, 86, maybe. I don't, and uh, Rich Kids uh, is a film that I really like. It's, like, a shot on location New York movie. And uh, Squid the Whale is, like, another, like, brown Brooklyn movie. These were all sort of, you know, connected in some way. The locations people got some of these references, and then the art direct, the art director, and production designer got some of these, and then Sean was given some. And 
I feel like a uh, responsibility to sort of beat the drum of why we we just shot our fourth movie on this Super 16. Um, like I feel a responsibility to sort of be a mouthpiece for why I like it so much. But to me, it's still not even a choice. Like to me, that's just what movies are made on, and it always has been, except for the last 10 years. So I still haven't quite adjusted to why another choice would be made. Um, I, I, you know, it's just beautiful. I love it. It's incredibly handsome format and uh, it's versatile and you know I, it, I don't have an answer because it's not even a decision it's just the way to me I want to make movies it's the way movies are made and uh, hopefully it's the way that movies can continue to be made and I think I've sort of proven and hopefully I you know talk about this a lot so that anybody in a position to learn is listening like <clears throat> my first two movies both were they were 15 and 25 thousand dollars and they were shot on film so there's really no like bottom of how cheap your movie can be if you still really want to shoot on film, it can be part of it.